everyone, welcome back to Mastering Mayhem. Thanks for joining me once again. Today we are gonna assemble the Soul F63 treadmill. Let's go ahead and do it. So we have most of the parts taken out. Okay, so this is the main section here that we have to move of the Soul F63 treadmill. In order to move the base of this treadmill, you at least need two people. Highly, highly recommend at least two people to help you move it from one place to another. So we're gonna take it from here, transfer right here in his uh, exercise room here and get it assembled. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna give him a call and we'll get that done. Okay, so for the main part, this is where the Salt S63 treadmill will remain. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting the arms on and just going step by step to show you how to get this guy together and ready for the exercise routines. All right, well, the first thing that uh, Sol recommends is making sure you have all your hardware. So make sure you check the list and make sure everything matches up. That way, once you get started, you don't have to get set back if anything's missing. So we already did step one. We removed everything from the packaging. We are gonna go on to step two right now. Sorry, I'm breathing heavy because I just took all the plastic off and that's some serious work. But yeah, do not remove this belt until the end that way if you do lift it up sideways or something the hydraulic and stuff doesn't come out but anyway it's a very important thing to know all right y'all so for the very first step it says install two speed nut clips 128 on the left and right sides of the frame base right here at the bottom these are the two speed nut clips and i'm going to give you a close-up of exactly what that looks like okay so these speed nut clips will be going on exactly the same way the right and left side over there. But I'm gonna show you the right side. You do exactly the same way here. It's right here at the bottom of the base arm and you got a, a hole here where a screw's gonna go on to keep the cover in place, right? To cover the cables and the, and the bare metal there. So one important thing is you see how it's got this dome here? That part is gonna go towards the inside, right? So just to show you here, you just slide this guy down, make sure the holes line up. This speed clip will help keep the cover in place. So basically the screw, if this is for the screw to go through and hold everything in place. All right, so we're gonna do uh, step two, part B. So basically the way you do this is these black plastic covers, you just slide the smaller ones uh, from the bottom of the main mass, right, the console mass. You take a number 64 and 65, slide it up the mass first, then 62 and 63, follows behind. Then you put the mass in place. So I'll show you guys how to do that. And then obviously we're gonna connect the computer wires as well. They are speaking specifically of this. What's great about these connectors is they will not connect if it's not properly lined up. So it can only go in one way and that helps a lot. So. Don't be too wor or worried or concerned about that because it can only connect if it's properly aligned. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do this step right here. Okay, I got the two uprights here in place, as you all can see. And I highly recommend an impact driver for the bigger bolts. You're gonna need Allen wrenches or Allen wrench bits. And then I recommend also a drill driver and a uh, manual screwdriver as well but get all these tools that's all you need they provide the allen wrench and screwdriver the phillips screwdriver that you need but again if you want to use your own tools how to recommend these so again we're gonna we're gonna get the boots on to these uh two masks and then we'll go from there all right y'all so this is what i was talking about the connection you got the male and female end just kind of line it up i can't do it with one hand but Basically, you just line these up and it can only connect one way, but this is what you need to connect before you take the upper mass and put it in place here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You'll see this in hyperlapse. And then if you have any questions on it, just uh, ask the questions in the comments. Okay, so now we have both the left and right uh, mass in place. This cable is now connected at the bottom. Again, just make sure to slide everything in where it goes. 
You're gonna have one in the front. There's a front hole right here as well on both sides. So it's gonna be a total of four bolts. And they are all the same type bolts, 130, 130. So you're gonna need eight bolts that are exactly the same. Do not over tighten and don't get too aggressive. Just uh, just take it one step at a time. So it says do not tighten the bolts completely until step seven is finished. So you wanna leave these two upright masks loose so you can get that arm in there first and then you can tighten everything down. And I think that's what a few of you were talking about in my, the F80 assembly that you couldn't get the arms and the console in place. I think you all maybe had tightened everything down from the get go and then it didn't give you any room to, to play and be able to move the mass at all. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so at this point, we got these four bolts in place on both the left and right mast. Make sure you get the two front ones, as well as the three side ones on each side. And in order to get these in place, you gotta finagle the caps a little bit and just put your hand under it. And you definitely gotta move the mast around because the holes don't always exactly line up easily. You should be able to screw these in place with your hands if you have the mast moved in the right place to get the holes lined up. But you have one, two, three, four. Same thing on the other side. And then, you can just drop the, and then you can just drop the covers and leave that be for now. Because the next step is to go get the main console here. It's saying it's recommended that you find something to rest the console on at an appropriate height or have someone hold the console while you connect the cables. Now I've done a lot of these by myself and I just kind of use my shoulder to hold this in place. So we gotta do that. We gotta connect the speed adjustment switch cable to the speed cable upper and basically connect everything and then tuck the excess cable into the handrail tubing to prevent it from getting pinched. So very, very uh, adamant about not getting those cables pinched because if you do, it will obviously uh, take away the functions of this main console. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll go from there. Okay, then also for step five, you need these four bolts, the one and three quarters in length and the split T washers. Uh, you, there's only four of each of these. So this is the step five uh, portion. That's the hardware you need to be able to get the main console onto the upper mess. Okay, so in order to get these two bolts on both sides of the console, you got one, two and one two over there you got to make sure you line everything up okay you get this console in place you line it up with the arms here same on the left side there and right underneath here there's a plastic post that goes into the hole into the metal arm on both sides so make sure you line that up and drop it in there otherwise it'll come out skewed and the plastic will begin to warp and tweak out and it won't sit. Basically, you won't be able to get these two bolts in place easily if you don't line that up. So just keep that in mind. The next step after we get that on, and remember, everything is still loose. So we haven't fully tightened everything. Attach left 64 and right upper. So it's gonna be these guys, we're gonna slide them up and attach them there. And then we will go from there, but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten Using the M6, it says to tighten these uh, four bolts there that hold the console onto the mass. And then we will go on to this uh, step six. So two things I highly recommend when you wanna get these two covers on right here, these two small ones up underneath the console arms right here, they're gonna attach here. Uh, it has a really deep uh, hole here before the screw can get up in here. So I highly recommend using a little bit of masking tape to keep that screw in place because you got to basically push it up into the tube before you can even come out to screw it in place. And the other thing I highly recommend is, if you can see this, is pre-screwing it with the screw to get the hole to open up a little bit. And that way when you go to screw it in, it'll be a bit easier to do. So the way this works is it'll hold it in place 
Uh, so it doesn't fall when you're trying to find the hole. Going through that tube, right? Just running the screw screwdriver through there. Anyway, recommend those two steps to get these two pieces on left and right. Okay, so step six with these little screws. It's probably gonna take the longest. It took me the longest just to get them in place and screw everything down. But now the covers are in place. Again, you gotta go into this little deep hole right here and here in order to get these guys in place. So you just gotta line everything up properly and you will be able to get them in place. This takes a little bit of finagling and a little innovation and creativity, but it does come together. All right, so now the next step here is we're gonna get the support tube between the two upright tubes in place. It's gonna be these four uh, Allen head button bolts and it's gonna go from here to those two holes right there. Anyway, it's going to go between the two uprights, so let's go ahead and do that. We got the support bar in the middle between the two uprights, or the mass in place. I only hand tighten it just to hold it in place. But now at this point it is telling us to tighten the bolts firmly. So we're going to tighten everything down firmly, and then we're going to get these caps on down here. The bottom covers, make sure everything's good. And we should be good to go after that. Basically it says after we put this tray on, what number 158, the tray, um, then we put the magnet of the safety key in between the start and stop buttons right there. So let's go ahead and tighten all the bolts down. These two here, these two here, and then the four on both upright. The four bolts here, there, and then two on each side up here. Okay, so everything is nice and tight and secure and in place. This guy is ready to be ran on and used. After, though, we put these small screws to keep these covers in place right here on the, on the back and the front. So you got these little slots right here. I don't know if you can see them. It's dark in this in this room, but it's right there. There's a cutout and then a little slot right here. So you got four of those. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we'll be able to plug this in, the uh, Soul F63. Make sure everything's good. We'll oil it and make sure it doesn't shift left or right. If it does, we'll adjust it. We'll go from there. That's all the hardware. Okay. So we got everything, no leftovers, nothing. Okay. Gave you a little auxiliary cord. If... We got the safety key there. We got the tablet slash phone holder. This was the last piece. It's just four screws back here. One, two, three, four. You'll see exactly where they are. Looks like you got a USB port here if you want that. It comes with built-in speakers. It comes with a fan as well. And right now, we are going to go ahead before we plug it in we are going to take this velcro strap off because we don't want the belt to start you know spinning on it without uh with this on here so let's go ahead and take it off all right we are about to plug this uh soul f63 in so you just plug it in right here where it says ac 120 and make sure it's securely in there and it is all right, and then it does have a reset button here, but we're gonna put that power button. So once you plug it in, sir, just uh, to that button. Yeah, so you hit that red switch. So here he goes, plugging it in. All right, he's gonna hit the switch. We should hear some kind of beep, and we did. It's saying right here, guys, uh, the walking belt on your new solar treadmill is made of the highest quality materials. Designed to last even under punishing condition. So it just kind of gives you a quick uh, overview here. And it comes in display mode. So I guess you got to take it out of that. Uh, it, yeah, see, so treadmill console comes in an in-store display mode of operation. Uh, so hold the stop, enter, and display keys for five seconds of display uh, mode. Oh, sorry, yeah, it says the display mode will, will show on. Oh, it will? So, oh. Okay, display mode off. <laughs> yeah. We got it. 
All right, so that's how you can do it, y'all. So just after you push those three for five seconds, you push the up arrow speed. That's weird. It says use up arrow or fast key to change the setting to off, then press enter. Oh, I don't think this comes pre oil Let's see. All right, y'all. So to oil it, you just lift up the edge of the belt uh, with the Soul F63. It says to come about 18 inches back away from the motor cover. So approximately right there. And it says you lift up the edge, put this guy in and squeeze about four inches in and just do like an S. Uh, you can look in there and make sure you, it's actually coming out. There we go. And do an S shape there for about 15 inches. All right, and just drop it down. Do the same thing on the other side, about 18 inches in. Make sure you're actually getting oil to come out about 15 inches. And when we turn it on, of course, the belt will spread it out and get it all over the uh, bottom metal plate there underneath the belt. All right, we started it. We're letting it run a little bit, let it spread that oil out. They call it the burn-in period where the belt itself, because it's such a high quality material that it has to kind of burn into and, and just kind of break itself in. But right now it sounds very, very smooth. Uh, and then if the gentleman wants to, did you want to get on it just to kind of see, see how it feels, make sure everything's good. Sounds good. That's the thumping sound. Yeah, so that, that's exactly what I was talking about, that thumping sound. You guys should be able to hear it will be, it will go away after it burns into the uh, the entire system, I guess is the word. I don't know what I'm saying. It sounds good. Does yeah. it feel good? There's no catching in? Okay. And uh, I guess the last thing I need to show them is just, yeah, how it comes up and locks into place. All right, so the customer is just gonna show you guys, this is lifted up, it, it is hydraulic assisted and it automatically locks into place. You don't have to, some models, you gotta like do a little kick on the uh, the bar there, the support bar, but this one doesn't. You just have it, it just comes up and locks into place. That's a nice logo right there. Mm -hmm. And then to release it, you got that yellow tab right there and you just kind of push up a little bit, pull that yellow tab down and then you can let, let go of the entire thing and it'll just drop very, very smoothly, very, very slowly and then you're back in business. Awesome, thank you. All right, everyone, uh, this belt is currently right in the middle after we ran it for about a minute or so, so it should be fine. But just to let you all know here, if you ever do need to adjust the belt, you obviously look at the instructions, but you use the Allen wrench that was provided. There are holes back here, and it can only be, it fits the Allen wrench. And depending on whether you need the belt to shift to the left or the right, it'll tell you in the instructions whether you turn the Allen wrench uh, one quarter turn, either clockwise or, or counterclockwise. So it just depends on what it says in the instructions, but this is where the location is, both sides, and they'll ask you to do that on both sides, either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on where you need that belt moved. So just keep that in mind and um, you'll be able to adjust the belt uh, anytime you need and however you need. All right, so just a few features that they have on their advertisement here. Their warranty is lifetime warranty on the frame and motor, three-year warranty on the deck electronics uh, and wear items, one-year warranty on labor. Sorry, the light right in the way. Uh, deck is cushion flex suspension system, easy assist folding, which we just demonstrated, a whisper deck, which is cool, super quiet operation, the motor is a three horsepower motor, smoothest ride extended motor life, whisper drive, super quiet operation, and lifetime warranty built to last. So I just wanted to show you guys those features on this Soul F63. All right, so we got this guy completed. Uh, the customer tested it out. Everything's running smoothly. Um, hopefully you guys will have a easy assembly on your own Soul F63. I hope this video helped. If it did, please remember to support by liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, clicking that notification bell. And as always here at Master Mayhem, I'm always looking to find you guys the best tools, tech, DIYs, and deals. Until next time, I only hope all the best to you and yours.